Hello and welcome to this Groove 3 course focused on Steinberg Sampler Halion 4. My name is Mark Struthers and I'll try and offer as much information as I can in this course while sticking to the brief of keeping it to one hour in length. So let's not waste any time, let's get started. I'll start by explaining where some of the functions are and to immediately start I'll mention what you can actually see at present. You're looking at the standalone version of Halion 4 rather than the plug-in version. There is virtually no difference between the two. However, one major difference is this top area here. You'll only see this in the standalone version. It's where connections are made between Halion 4 and your external equipment, such as your keyboard, etc. If we look at the top left of the user interface, and I'll zoom into just this area for the moment, then you'll see we organize our MIDI inputs here, and at present you can see I'm set to all MIDI inputs at the moment. Therefore, Halion 4 is receiving MIDI information on all MIDI channels. By the way, if you see it's not connected like this, then simply change it to all MIDI inputs. Now just below that, as you can see there, my output at the moment is set to go to those particular speakers hooked up. And you'll see there that my speakers, my left and right, are connected to Halion 4's master output left and right. This button, just to the right of all MIDI inputs, allows me to call up this dialog. This is the key commands dialog box, and it's here that you can set up, if you don't like the defaults, any particular key commands that you want to individualize whilst you are running Halion 4. Now at present you can see I've got all these key commands set up by default. For example, under transport, the key commands are set up for loop, play and play stop, record, return to zero and finally stop. I'm not going to do anything for the moment, so I'll simply OK this. Now just below that button, and to the direct right of my outputs, there is this button, and if I click on it, then this calls up this plugin preferences dialog. As you can see, there are six separate tabs there. You don't necessarily have to use them all, but I'll quickly go through them with you. Starting with MIDI routing, then next to that is my audio routing, and there you'll see what we've just spoken about in terms of my speakers, i.e. the speakers that are connected to my audio output ports. And in actual fact, you'll see all the different output ports there. Moving along now to metronome, in this settings area here, this mode field is set to off at the moment, resulting in, of course, I don't hear any metronome ticking away. Now, if I did want to hear the metronome, then, of course, clearly clicking on here and changing this to the bottom option there, on, of course, will allow me to hear my metronome. I've got further control, as you can see there. Just underneath, I've got a slider. And this allows me to adjust the actual volume level of the metronome ticking away. Furthermore, if I want to hear this metronome ticking away using a different output from what I've got set at present, then I've got the option to change it to a different output. I suppose this would allow me to send a metronome out to a different musician, perhaps a drummer, and then I could play along to the drummer listening to the metronome, and then I can play what ostensibly would appear to be a more freeform performance. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'll leave it as it is, but there's that option for you. And so I'll move across to general now. There is only this one option here for settings. And as you can see there, we have that statement, don't prompt for confirmation when quitting Halion. Now I suppose how you have this set, checked or unchecked, depends on the sort of person that you are. I actually find it a little bit irritating, so I always have it unchecked, so I'm not prompted each time. However, I can see the value of having this. Say, for example, you were performing live in standalone mode, then rather than accidentally closing Halion 4 down mid-song, then of course it would be useful to have a message popping up asking me if I'm really sure I do actually want to close Halion 4. So having this option obviates any particular embarrassment mid-song. Right then, I'll move across to the penultimate tab now, this one marked ASIO driver. And it's here that you can set up your particular ASIO driver, more often than not, linked to your sound card. Now, because I'm recording this tutorial for you running Halion 4 in standalone mode on my laptop, then I see the particular ASIO driver I've chosen at the moment. It's this one, this generic low latency ASIO driver. But if I want to change this to a different driver than clicking the drop reveal there, well, as you can see, I can choose from any of those particular drivers. Now what you're going to see of course will be pertinent to your particular system and the sound card that you use. 
Now you'll see the checkbox there is unchecked at the moment and that checkbox allows me to release the particular ASIO driver should another program want to use it as well. For example, if I'm running another program, an audio editing program such as Wavelab, and I would possibly be doing that because Wavelab integrates well within Halion 4 when I want to create my own samples. Well, rather than having to close Halion down and then open up Wavelab, make some editing to a particular sample and then close Wavelab down and then open Halion, well, by having this option, it means that the same sound card can be shared between two programs. Incidentally, I'll show you later on how we set this up so we can use Wavelab in combination with Halion. Now, that's for a later tutorial, so I'm not too concerned with it at the moment, so I'll leave it unchecked. Do notice these other options down here though. We can see the HW sample rate. Now on my laptop, the only option I've got available is 44.1 kHz, i.e. CD quality. And just below that though is the audio priority. Now I don't think there's any better way of me explaining this than simply telling you what Steinberg declare. They state, when you run Halion, there are several processors fighting for access to processor time in your computer. And the parameter audio priority allows you to determine which processes have priority. And we've got two options, normal and boost. If it's set to normal, then in this mode, any non-audio processes and audio playback get roughly equal priorities. However, if we change it to boost, then in this mode, audio precedes MIDI in priority. And Steinberg suggests to try this mode if audio playback problems occur when playing back MIDI and audio material. Now I'm going to take this back to normal, but should I experience any problems with audio and MIDI, then I would take it to boost. Now there is one more thing I want you to look at here. See this checkbox here? Well, if I check it, where it says activate Steinberg audio power scheme, well, as soon as I do, then I'll see this message detailing all this information about what this particular function within Halion 4 allows me to do. It's a system set up by Steinberg that allows particular ASIO settings if they are set very low, it will allow for the best possible audio performance, as it says there at low latency ASIO settings. However, do notice that there is that proviso. It says that this also increases the power consumption of your computer. You'll notice there is further information as well, and you'll find the further information about this on the Steinberg knowledge base. I'm going to click on OK. Now, actually, I'm going to deactivate that option, seeing as it takes up more processing power. And therefore, finally, if I move over to the final tab, the advanced tab, then it's here by clicking on control panel, that button there, then I can call up the control panel for the ASIO driver that I've got running. And from within here, I can make any relevant changes that I deem necessary. Now, you're going to have to set this up relevant to your particular sound card. Now, because your ASIO driver related to the audio card will be remarkably different to what I've got here, then I won't talk about it in any detail. So I'll click on cancel and then OK to remove that from sight. Now what I'll do is I'll move over to this area and in actual fact, I'll focus in on it. It's within this area that amongst other things, you can set your tempo. Simply click on tempo to be able to see the word track appear just next to it and the tempo here set at 120 BPM can now be adjusted simply by using that rotary dial. Move it clockwise to increase the tempo or if you want to decelerate the tempo then move it anti-clockwise. It's quite possible that you've got Halion 4 running like this in standalone mode hooked up to a drum machine and other synth modules. Well, by being able to change the tempo and lock it in with all your other modules, of course, is useful. I say useful, really, I suppose I should say essential. So that's how you change the tempo. Now, if you want to change the time signature, well, there, as you can see at the moment, it's set to 4-4. Four, four. Well, by clicking in it, well, I can change it to a different time signature. Maybe I'll change it to 3-4 time. Now, I'm not going to. I will change it back to 4-4 four, four time. I'm not a jazz musician, so 4-4 four, four is good enough for me. Moving to the right once more, this area here is the scratch pad area. And within this scratch pad area, you're going to see these transport controls, play, record, stop, etc. And there's also that loop button there. Now, this scratch pad area is very useful. And Steinberg have implemented this as a way of allowing you to record and play back MIDI files in standard MIDI file format so that you can play along and record additional performances too. 
We also see that the display shows the song position, the tempo and the time signature of the particular MIDI file. And there's also a metronome option too. Now this scratch pad is able to play back multi-track MIDI files, sending notes on all 16 MIDI channels. Additionally, it also sends MIDI program change messages when a MIDI file is loaded. Now, I won't say too much more about this at the moment. We'll get back to this as necessary. But as I'm sure you'll appreciate, having this scratch pad is a great function so that you can jam along to a MIDI file without the necessity of opening up a DAW such as Cubase. Consequently, you can still run Halion 4 in standalone mode like this. Now, just to the right over here is the master volume dial. OK, so that's a brief look through then what we see when we open up Halion 4 in standalone mode. Now, as I say, we'll see everything else that we can see here when we are running it as a plugin within Cubase or another sequencer, apart from that extra strip running across the top. Right, I'll leave this tutorial here now then and we'll progress. So I'll see you in a moment.